Hey, folks, it's Mark Aram. I hope you're enjoying the Mark Aram Show podcast. A reminder, you can hear this very radio show live Monday through Friday. We're live 6 to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday on 95.5 WSB Atlanta's News and Talk. It's Friday. We made it. Traffic stinks, but we're going to keep you happy on your ride home. That is my uh, solemn vow, as Sean Hannity likes to say. Mark Aram, the banana is with you till 8 in the p.m. Second hour of the show. Currently my favorite stand-up comedian uh, active right now, a guy named Sam Morrill. So funny. So funny. Um, Very curious to see what he has to say about life in general. Brittany from Access Atlanta will join us for the second hour as well. First hour, though, I want to talk about, uh, if I say to you, Deb Green, executive producer of the Mark Aram Show, I I haven't had you for a week, so I'm I'm just happy to talk to you finally again. Um, The world's largest outdoor cocktail party, you know what that is, right? Football. Well, you you blew the you knew you say yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Longoria. What's the world's largest outdoor cocktail party? Yes. <laughs> do you know what it is though? <laughs> no, I'm not. Chuck, do you know what it is? The largest uh, world's largest outdoor like cocktail party. Like where it is, or what, what it is exactly? Where what anything? I think it's football, and I'm <laughs> pretty sure it's down in Florida somewhere. Yeah, it's the Georgia Florida game at there Jacksonville. So it's it's been dubbed. The school doesn't like the schools don't like us calling it the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. But okay. that's basically what it is. I've been number of I've been a number of times. It's it's a fun time. I, I'm too old to do it now and and, and do it like I did back in my twenties. But it's an experience. Um, the the most shocking thing the first time I went down there, and I mean this, I mean the, I do not mean this misogynistically at all, Deb Green. I'm looking at you, but the women were so attractive at that game that an average girl caught your eye. It's ne- that's never been the way. You know, it was like it was like hot girl, hot girl. Oh, a four. What what? It, that's <laughs> how. Anyway, does that does that come off misogynistic? It was like. Just no. like the, I think that's just what happens when you're at games like that. But it, and the guys too. Uh, for eh, maybe the guys were good looking too. But it was like I've never seen a bigger collection of attractive people in my life, which made me seem fatter and uglier than ever. <laughs> uh, but the problem is that you know fans, true fans of both Georgia and Florida, um, some anyway, don't like the fact that it's held every year at a neutral site. So Georgia never gets to play Florida at home in Sanford Stadium. The Gators never get to host Georgia in the swamp in Gainesville. You know what I'm saying? So why imagine, is it? That? Why is yeah, that? What, what, it's is it's reason just for that? been tradition. I don't know because it's a it's a storied rivalry. It's I an SEC tradition. But the fact that as as a as an adopted okay. Georgia fan, I always felt like, and every time I went there, it seemed there were more Florida fans because it's in Florida. Like it, the game's held in Florida. And it just seemed unfair to me. All where do they? Um, what? What does it differ in the stadiums, or is it the same stadium it's every year? It's in Jacksonville, so it's oh. a neutral stadium. Oh, okay. But it's the Sorry. same. It's where stadium. the Jaguars play. But it's the same stadium every year, right? Same stadium oh, every year, okay. unless there's a hurricane or something. Right. But right, yeah, right. traditionally always the same stadium. But uh, you know, I, I became a Bulldog fan in '96 when I moved down here and went to the Georgia Florida game for a number of years after that. And I always. I mean, it's a long drive. It's longer to go from Athens to Jacksonville than obviously from Gainesville to Jacksonville. And it seemed like there were always more Florida fans just because it was closer, you know. And forget the fact that it seemed like every time I went down there, Georgia lost. And, I, you know, just Yeah, that didn't help. Like the party the night before was great. But then when you lose, it's like, "Ah." So I've always been a proponent of let's do away with this. Let's. I want to see the Florida Gators have to deal with the Georgia home crowd, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure there are Gator fans that want to see Georgia have to deal with their their home crowd. We find out today that the game has been extended in Jacksonville till 2023 with an option to extend till 2025. So at, at the very le- earliest, 2024 is when we're going to do away with this tradition. And I, I get it. I love tradition, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I just don't I just don't like it. My proposal, actually, I stole this. I think it was from Jeff Schultz, the uh, former AJC columnist. He proposed a rotating schedule, a three-year rotating schedule. One year Georgia hosts, one year Florida hosts, and then the third year you have the neutral side in Jacksonville. And you figure most college players are playing at least three years, and then some go to the NFL. So if you're a college player, you'll get to play at home against Florida on the road against Florida, and on the neutral side. I think that's a great – Jeff Schultz, I tip my hat to you, very uh, smarter man than I, came up with that proposal. I think that's great. Now, why am I bringing this up? This isn't a sports talk show. It reminds me as we approach Thanksgiving, right? Longoria, Deb Green, Low T. Chuck, you guys all, y'all, have in-laws, 
right? Yes. Yeah. That's always a, a topic, uh, a kind of a, a hot topic around the holidays because it's like, what do we do for the holidays with the in-laws? Like, what are we going to do on Thanksgiving? What do we do Christmas Eve? What do we do Christmas Day? It's always a thing. And I just realized maybe you all with in-laws should should do the Georgia, Florida thing and do a neutral site. <laughs> you know, because I, I mean, back, I back when I had in-laws, right. it was always like, well, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? You know, uh, we can go there. We'll get there last year or Christmas Eve. We'll do this. And, and it's kind of like, uh, so maybe everyone goes to Jacksonville for the. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. let's pick a neutral site. To do that, I want I want to talk about that. We'll talk about the Georgia Florida game staying in Jacksonville. But what do you do when it's the holidays and Christmas is coming, and your parents want you at your place, and her parents want you at her place? How do you determine where you go? Give me some good stories about the in-laws and holidays, and how you've come up with solutions for that. Maybe. Everyone just goes to Jacksonville. 404-872-0750. 1-800-WSB-TALK. Smile, before I go to the phones, you, you spent 28 years as a sportscaster down the street at uh, the Cable News Network. Any thoughts on the neutral site for Georgia, Florida? I think that uh, tradition speaks that way, but wouldn't it be great to get the game in Mercedes-Benz? That would be fun. Ooh, all right. Mix in. Maybe change up the neutral site. One year it's Jacksonville. One year it's the Benz. Not bad. See, everyone's smarter than me. Jeff Schultz is smarter than me. Mark McKay is smarter than me. All the bananas are smarter than me. Let's see if Paul is smarter than me. Paul, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. How are you, sir? Uh, 100%. I've got some good news about Gwinnett County. Um, there's a private company building two-story houses for elderly people. Oh, Paul, I, if- I, I love you, but I'll, you're not doing it to me today. You're not doing it to me today. Chuck will give you his personal cell phone. You can call him after the show. Or on the weekend. Or on the weekend. Yeah, call him tomorrow. Let's call him Sunday morning at 6 Mm a.m. Tony's up on the Mark Aram Show. Tony, do you want to talk about elderly housing or something else? Something else. Excellent. What's going on, buddy? Uh, I need your help, Mark. Okay. Last night, I went to a movie premiere. It's a film festival. It was over in it was over in Decatur okay. at the Porter Sanford Center, and it was for a movie that I heard about on the Internet. It's called Prodigal. Now, my 14-year-old daughter loves the actor Michael Bullard. He is in this movie as a principal, but there is a lot of language in this movie, but there is a 10-year-old little boy in this movie as well. Now, I want to know if you had a 14-year-old daughter, would you take her to see this movie because she loves this actor? What's the, what's the movie rated? It's rated PG-13, I believe. Then, yes, I would. If I would take my 14-year-old daughter, I would be there with her. I wouldn't let her go alone, but I would I would be there for parental guidance. Okay. Well, I saw it last night, and it's a really good movie um there's just you know it's about a lot of, a lot of bad language i get it listen i yeah. I, I understand the sensitivity there uh, yeah as long as you're there you can explain you can have a conversation after apparently we're doing whatever anyone wants to talk about tonight that's, that's, so just whatever what rushes thing we're just, you know, just, just free balling nobody it. wants to talk about the game yeah, yeah. we're just we're just free balling <laughs> it or, or holidays fault. i gotta stop taking phone calls right now four eight seven two zero seven fifty i'd like to talk about georgia florida and what you do in the holidays with your in-laws and maybe you need a neutral site like jacksonville but whatever goes, uh, elderly housing, movies, recipes, uh, whatever you want is fine. It's Friday. I'm, I'm with you. I've, I've thrown my hands up as well. Mike's on the Mark Aram Show. Mike, what do you want to talk about, buddy? Hey, Mike. First, or, uh, Mark, what? first thing is uh, put some Band-Aids over them nipples. Mine? Yeah. And second thing is um, I wash my hands. Uh, what is going on? So for Thanksgiving, thank goodness my <laughs> husband is British, yeah. and I don't have to worry about that. Like I get to, my parents come visit me, and that's all about. I have to worry about. I don't have to do anything over with his family. I just I, is it a full moon? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. What the? What's going on? I don't know. What is going that's on three, here? That's three calls in a row. What? Yeah. What the <laughs> hell's going on here, folks? No. 
What did he want me to put on my tape on your nipples? So we had a traffic trooper call. I get, maybe did you have you runner? I mean, were you cold this morning? <laughs> I'm cold uh, every morning. Right, runners do that. So we had a traffic trooper called. Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> the nipper, N I P P E R. Okay. And it's so close to nipple, and I was like, um, I always would like watch it when I said on the air. We heard from traffic trooper. The nipper, yeah. you know, I'd go really slow. Right. And one day I went really slow, but I said, traffic trooper, the nipple <laughs> on the air. And Veronica Waters absolutely lost it. Where mm-hmm. am I going, Chuck? Jenny? Yeah. I mean, I, this is, I mean, let's go for four in a row. Let's roll the dice. Yeah. Jenny, it's the crazy yeah. night on the Mark Aram show. Hello, Jenny. Well, it's Friday night, so it's yes. got to be crazy. Indeed. Okay, 61 year old Georgia fan. I've obviously had a lot of trips to Florida, I've also had in laws. So which one do you want to tell us about first? <laughs> tell me about the in-laws first. Okay. My siblings' family, I have three older brothers and a younger sister. And after a number of years of my mom getting desperately disappointed because she said the boys' wives always took them yeah. to their parents' house, she finally gave up. And this is what she did. She said, my birthday is January 12th. So we will have Christmas on January 12th. At her house. At her house. I like that. You know what? I forgot about the whole sibling thing there, too. If you've got siblings with family, like Chuck's brother and his mail-order Russian bride, what do you do then? Oh, my goodness. All right. Georgia, Florida, neutral site, in-laws for holidays, and literally whatever you freakazoids want to talk about. 404 404- 872-0750 1-800-WSB Talk. This is the Mark Aram Show. Chuck screening the calls now to uh, maybe filter out some of this uh, stuff. Don's in Cartersville. Don, real quick, buddy, what do you have? Hey, man, let's, let's play a game in Georgia, a game in Florida. Whoever wins, if Georgia wins two games, then the third game's in Georgia. Ooh. If they both split the highest score total of both games get to play at their home field. That's kind of like pick up basketball winner, winner's out. It's like you score, you get the ball again. You score, you get the ball again. That's not too bad. I'm still on board with the Jeff Schultz rotating home, home, neutral. Home, home, neutral. You know what I'm saying, Longoria? Home, home, you. neutral. More of your calls on the Georgia-Florida game is going to stay in Jacksonville till at least 2023. And is the time for neutral sites for the holidays. 404-872-0750. On Twitter and Instagram, at Mark Aram. This is the Mark Aram Show. This is Louis Anderson, and you're listening to the Mark Aram Show. 639, 21 in front of 7. The Bananas and myself at your beck and call until 8. Don't forget, you can listen to the Mark Aram Show once you get home via Amazon Alexa or the WSB Radio app and all of the podcasts available on WSBradio.com, iTunes, and SoundCloud. Georgia Florida game going to be held in Jacksonville at least until 2023 with an option to extend to 2025. That's the news announced today on your home of the dogs, the world's largest uh, outdoor cocktail party. I I get the tradition, but I think it's time to end it. I'm going to go with uh, my buddy Jeff Schultz's suggestion where we do a three year rotation home at Georgia, home at Florida, and then a neutral site and maybe rotate that neutral site. Um, Jacksonville, the Mercedes Benz Stadium, maybe New Orleans. Get us down on Bourbon Street once in a while. That'd be cool. Your thoughts on that, and what are you going to do for the holidays with the in-laws? On Thanksgiving and Christmas, is it time to start picking neutral sites to make sure everyone's happy? Because I know a lot of a lot of stress can come from that, Longoria. You've got it. Your yeah. mother-in-law lives with you, so yeah. what do you guys do for Christmas? Your uh, mom well, it depends. If I, if I can get the week off to go to Texas, yeah. then it becomes a little of a problem. But if I can't, I'm here. I have to stay here. I mean, they can come over here if they want. Does Mama Longoria come, come yeah, in? Yeah, every once in a while. But, yeah. like, this year I got Christmas week off. Oh, nice. So, um, so, gonna so go we're going to go over there. We're going to spend in Houston until Christmas Day and yeah. then drive to Corpus on Christmas Day and then spend the rest of the week. What are you going to do with your mother-in-law? She's going to stay in Houston with her son. Oh, you're taking her to Texas, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, she's right. going with us. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Did your mother-in-law call you Longoria yet? And she does not. Dag nabbit. Gary's in Madison. Gary, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. Hey, Mark. How are you? What's going on, Gary? Hey, man. I'm going to keep it on the subject, man. Florida and Georgia. I appreciate um, you doing that, by the way. Hey, who is it that makes that decision, Mark? I believe It's the schools. I guess the schools get together. The d- director of athletics, Greg McGarity. Um, you know, gets with the director of athletics for Florida, and I guess they and I would imagine Jacksonville is is in there in the negotiation somehow, right? I mean, they've got to grease the wheels because that's a big financial boost to the city of Jacksonville. 
Yeah, that's the only that's the only team that we play that we have to go neutral. Exactly, exactly. And there are times, listen, where we could have that home field advantage. I've seen a couple of losses down in Jacksonville where I'm like, man, if this game was at home, we would win this game. I know it. Yeah, I mean, they must be getting some kind of uh, payback or something. Oh, they're getting money. How much <laughs> they're, it... they're getting money for sure. I don't know either. Maybe Deb Green can find out. Uh, the economic well, I, impact to Jacksonville, by the way, last year for the game was $30 million. That's a lot of money. You know what's funny? My cousin graduated from Florida, and yes, you can hold that against him. But every time I say Georgia-Florida game, he goes, no, it's Florida-Georgia. <laughs> it's so funny. Florida fans call it the Florida-Georgia game, and Georgia yeah. fans call it Georgia-Florida. I wonder what they call the band, the Florida-Georgia line. Or they, do they call it the Georgia-Florida line? <laughs> the Georgia-Florida line, exactly right. <laughs> Mary's in Duluth. Duluth. Duluth is on fire. What's going on, Mary? Hi, Mark. How are you this evening? Excellent. What's cooking? Well, exactly. Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Um, for for years, you know, we ran all over the place and did three and four meals at, you know, different houses. So I guess about 10 years ago, I decided I'm cooking everything at my house. Everybody come here. So one Thanksgiving dinner, probably about five or six years ago, we had my mother, my husband's mother, mm-hmm. my newlywed daughter and her husband. Mm-hmm. My brother and his girlfriend and my preteen daughter. And we're all sitting enjoying the fabulous Thanksgiving dinner. So we go around the table and, you know, trying to catch up from the year. Everybody's enjoying a great dinner. And my mother-in-law has to start discussing the fact that she's now going to the senior center, which we're happy about. Yes. And she's taking art classes. Aww. And then also starts rambling in detail about the pamphlet that she picked up. That describes oral sex for seniors. Oh my God! And we oh, oh God! I don't I don't know Can if anybody else. Can we say that on the air? Is... Can we say, you said um, <laughs> Coral Essex, a pamphlet on exactly. Coral Essex. Yes, Hotel exactly. Coral Essex. Oh my! How old? And how old is know. she? She's eighty five. Oh my God! <laughs> and and nice I don't know if any. I, I don't know if anyone else enjoyed the meal because nobody would make eye contact for the rest of the evening. It was. Chuck, Chuck wants to know if you still have the pamphlet. Do you do you still have it? Can you send it to us? She did not bring it. She had to tell us about it, which made it even worse. Oh you know, my! If she if she would have got it, I would have said, you know, thanks, mom. I'll just I'll read this later. But I've got no. I've got to I got to find that on eBay. Look look. I'm yeah. not going to search for it, Deb. You search for it. Look for that She's pamphlet. Like, no, I'm not. That pamphlet on eBay. Hotel Coral Essex for seniors. Wow. That's what you have to look forward to, Longoria. I guess so. I guess <laughs> Thanksgiving so. dinner at your mom's house. All right, we're going to come back. More of your calls. The Georgia-Florida game sticking in Jacksonville. And uh, what are you going to do with the in-laws for the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas? Is it time to pick a neutral site? Just send everyone down to Jacksonville like uh, Georgia and Florida do. 404-872-0750 on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Aram. This is the Mark Aram Show. Uh, we'll see you at the listener lunch tomorrow, noon. If you donate $219 to the Carathon, we'll see your butts there. Uh, Chris joins us in Jasper. Chris, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. Hey, Mark. Hey, buddy. Hey, I just wanted to throw a couple of uh, in, some info into the, into the room here. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, when Florida first started, they didn't have a home field. So they used Jacksonville as their home field. The Gator Bowl, so yeah. Technically... We've been we've been playing on Florida's home field since 1933. It certainly feels like it when you go down there. Oh yeah, they say their tickets are split fifty fifty, but it's always been Florida's yeah. favor. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. What do you think I would think be the best solution? I think we should go back and forth with Auburn. We got a more storied history with Auburn, and our very first game played with Auburn yeah. was in Piedmont Park in Atlanta. Isn't it the isn't Auburn Georgia the longest rivalry? In the uh, southeast, oh, yeah, the oldest rival in the south. Yeah. Like I said, our first game was played in Piedmont Park in Atlanta. Yeah. So technically, we played on a neutral site for our very first game. Can I you believe that? that? Would a be a Longoria, better. a football game at Piedmont Park. Can you believe? Really? That? Yeah, that's weird. They can play it on the Belt Line now, the world's most famous uh, <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> Your favorite place. Uh, Michael's up next on the Mark Aram Show. Hey, Michael. Hey, how you doing? What up, brother? Well, you want a good story for the holidays? I would love it. Okay. I'm from Wisconsin, wife's from Clearwater, which is in Tampa. We used to take Christmas, go one to Wisconsin, one to Tampa. My father is all alone, my lost mother years ago. My mother-in-law, 
uh, went ahead and separated from her husband. Ooh. Well, everybody came to our house last Christmas. Yeah. And we had uh, a night of Pinochle, if you ever played cards. Oh, absolutely. The old school. That's a big Midwest game, Pinochle, Longoria. That's that's where all the uh, cards are face cards, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we also at the table had Jack Daniels, Stolies, and Hiram Walker uh, helping us play the game. I'll be there. I'll be there this year. But you see, Michael chose a neutral site. His house became the Jacksonville of Christmas. Russ in Gainesville. Russ, uh, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Well, we missed you last uh, last night, the night before. You were in the uh, hotel lobby with uh, the lawyer's daughter. What's the latest? Yep. She's here with me now, Kristen, my girlfriend thing, whatever she is. Girlfriend I'm hoping, thing. you know, if I marry her, I get free uh, legal aid. Well, that's that's a gift that keeps on giving, <laughs> Russ. Lady. Yep. So this hey, is good. I voted for you today, by the way. You voted for me? You're running for city council now. Oh. Yeah, whenever I vote and it's a candidate with nobody else and it's a feeling, I always put Mark Aram. Mark Aram, all right, in Gainesville. So uh, I got to move to Hall County, Longoria. There you go. Longoria. Yep. Um, we never uh, got an answer. How was the continental breakfast at the hotel you went at the other day? You know what? We didn't have it because let me tell you what happened. We went down to the office that night because we were having trouble with the television. Yeah. And he gave us a great big uh, – brand new thing of danishes Ooh. in a box so we already had it ah. in the room, you know, so we didn't have to go anywhere breakfast in bed <laughs> little post yep. uh hotel coral essex danish i love it i love the danish my friend yeah it was good yeah all right russ uh have a great weekend my friend thank you we'll talk to you on monday hopefully lord willing and the creek don't rise daniels and griffin daniel you're on the mark aram show hey mark uh, I know part of the tradition with the Georgia Florida game is that that is a home game for the for the dog fans that live in South Georgia. Yeah, and but... that's one reason they do that. So, and and in the '90s, there were two years that they were redoing the stadium down in Jacksonville. They did have it in Florida one time and Georgia one time. Oh, we I did not know that. Up in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Spurrier ran it up over 50 points. Oh God. That's a name I never want to hear again, Steve Spurrier. So many, I, I mean, I, I went down to that game so often, Longoria, with such high hopes. And that's a long ass drive if you've lost it is. coming back. Scott's in Buford. Scott, real quick, what do you have, buddy? Hey, uh, as a person who's been to that game uh, since 1991 in Jacksonville, there's nothing neutral about it. Um, I went as a 14 year old, now I'm in my 40s. Uh, <laughs> the city of Ga- Jacksonville gouges, you know, out of town guests. Sure. Uh, you know, you you know you're in enemy territory. The only reason why we continue this nonsense is because our athletic director Greg McGarity cares more about money at the end of the day than anything else. Well, so I would imagine it's it's a big payday for stuff. sure. It's a big payday for sure. Kelly and Noonan, Kelly, you got uh, 20 seconds. I'm so sorry. Real quick, what do you have? Well, I was in a band in the mid '80s and went to the bowl three times, and I remember about 15 minutes of it. <laughs> One time at band camp. Did you ever go to band camp, Kelly? (laughs) A lot of stuff went on in band camp. All right, when we come back, I'm saying this uh, without any bluster, Longoria. My favorite stand-up comedian currently, Sam Morrill, is going to be in studio. That's, That's something to stick around for. Hang tight. We'll be right back on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Aram. This is the Friday edition of The Mark Aram Show. The Mark Aram Show is performed before a live studio audience. No. Welcome back. Friday edition of The Mark Aram Show. Don't forget The Mark Aram Show listener lunch tomorrow at noon. If you donated that $219 to the uh, Children's Health Care of Atlanta Carathon, you are eligible to come. You should have gotten an email from the folks at CHOA. If not, just show up at the door and say, hey, I gave money. I'm here. Let me in and let me eat some food. Uh, Joining us in studio right now, and I say this not because you're sitting here, Sam, but I truly, and I say this with all honesty, I truly think you're the funniest person on the planet right now. Oh, dude. I think you, you. Have, <laughs> you have broken through the ceiling, and you are as sharp as anyone or sharper than anyone on, on stages right now. It's Sam Morelli. He's at the punchline tonight and tomorrow. Thanks, dude. You're killing it. You are absolutely killing it. Uh, Do you feel it, too? Do you no. feel that? No, dude. I'm self-producing my next special. I feel like I feel like it's still like me against the world in, in a way. Like It's so weird. Like uh, No, I don't feel... I, I feel good. I'm also... I haven't had really... Been, I haven't been drinking the last two months. That is like huge. 
That that's a life changer for you. It's insane. I didn't know that I could travel and not like have to vomit in the airport <laughs> bathroom. Like I didn't. I forgot. I'm like, oh, I don't have to just. I don't have to be because when you travel hungover, you, that's like I didn't realize that was going to be most of my life is just waiting in lines hungover. You know, that's what the that, comics' life is. It is. You know, like <laughs> lines at the airport or lines for the Uber. You know, like everything is just a line. You're like, I'm. I'm freaking hungover. <laughs> so I'm what, feeling what prompted great now. the dry spell? Was it was it a recognition that I, I'm drinking too much, or you yeah, didn't want to be hungover? Yeah, I woke up one day after like a few of those, and uh, it's funny. Uh, this girl that I'm sort of seeing now, she said, "Well, I guess we are definitely seeing each other." I say, sort of, <laughs> if she hears this, we're definitely, <laughs> definitely seeing dating. each other. So you're not mad at me? Uh, no, we're definitely dating. But she messaged me before we were dating, just a kind of a nice message. Because uh, I wrote something like, "How you know I'm I'm on stage and I uh, a- after like a seven a.m. drinking night or something," and she was like, "Wow, very impressive." And I was like, "No, I mean it's like a, not impre- It's a problem. It's <laughs> yeah, not exactly. impressive that I'm a functioning alcoholic, yeah. you know." So I uh, there was that, and there was like there were a few more days in a row like that, and then I um, I remember calling out sick at the comedy cellar because I'd just been vomiting all day, and I was like, "I'm too old for this." Is that like so? That's like a normal. Like if you had a normal job, like if I call in sick, I have, there's someone I have to call. Comics yeah. do that too. You call up. You have to. Uh, hey. Yeah, it's I, we don't fake it. Is a difference, you know. <laughs> I was like, you saw me last night, and she's like, yeah, I saw you. I was like, I can't come. And she's like, right. I I figured that's funny. Yeah, because I mean we're working there at night, so yeah. she see she saw how I was. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so there was that, and then this girl that I'm seeing now was was kind of like, well, I never would have like opened up to you if I thought you'd get your life together because she lives in L.A. <laughs> so so now she's like. Damn, I didn't know you were... Now it's commitment. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. She, I think she was like, oh, you're safe because you have a problem and I'll never date you. And I was like, awesome. And then I was like, well, what if I didn't have a problem? And she's like, I don't know. That, and not to be uh, Sigmund Freud here, but that tells me you like this one. I think I do like her, yeah. But then, so that helped me. Is she me. a fan or is she a, a She's in the comedian. business. She's, She's in the business. Yeah. All right, we'll but, leave it at that. Yeah, but do, you know, I... <laughs> No, I I wanted to cut back for a while just to see if I could, and I feel so much better. It's crazy. That's good. I mean, I feel good right now. I went to bed at like four. (laughs) Sam Morell joins us in studio. He is at the Punchline tonight and tomorrow. Tickets available online at punchline.com, but hurry in because when I went and logged on, they were almost sold out, so very limited availability. Now that you are not drinking, um, I would imagine, I'm just going to make an assumption here, that you're sharper on stage, but maybe... The writing off stage isn't as sharp. Is it? Does it mess with the process? At no, all? I think it's probably better. You know, it's funny when, when you when you cut back and you're happier. You're like, oh my god, like where are the jokes going to come from? But they still come. Like okay. I'm still irritable. You know, <laughs> like like I'm still. I'm not like you know. I think no. I think you're sharper in general, and I yeah. feel much more. Though I, I've noticed that people after the shows will sometimes get offended if you don't do a shot with them. Yeah, but that always kind of. I was never like a shot drinker. I was always kind of a sipper. But like it's weird when an adult is like, do a shot with me, and like you're an Yeager. adult, you shouldn't, you, sh- you should be sipping too. So what I, what I've noticed, for, I think, I mean, drinking is prevalent in a lot of professions, but I think stand up comedy in particular, and and this is my theory: when when comics start out, you're often not paid. Like it's at, crazy. At man. the best, you're gonna get a free drink or two before and after the show, and so it just becomes a natural thing. I'm a comedian. I'm gonna drink after the show. That's my only payment, and I think. Maybe that just becomes part of the routine. Like, I do my show, I do, I have a drink. It's a very mature response. I'm not going to get paid, so I'm going to develop an addiction that I can't shake. So You've never there. done... When I was an intern, like, not getting paid at radio station or TV station, and I would... Whatever was free, I was there. I took free cereal. I took all this Everything. stuff. Yeah, Every, for Like, sure. free hand sanitizer. I'm like, oh, I'm not getting paid. I might as well take the sanitizer home. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah for sure. You have to. No, I, I didn't drink that, but I used it as legitimate hand sanitizer <laughs> but i don't know i just try to you know relate to that world where effed up on purell dude <laughs> out of out of uh fight out of fighting the power no i just think um yeah of course yeah you're on the road especially when you're young and immature yeah. like i definitely would just get hammered it's funny to look back and just be like i'm at work just getting obliterated because i'm <laughs> mad they're not paying me enough yeah. it's such a weird protest that they're just not picking up on they're like oh i guess this guy just is a problem <laughs> they don't realize that i'm that i'm like mad that yeah. they're not paying me they're not paying me uh you're getting paid now so sam Earl's in studio punchline this weekend tonight and tomorrow punchline.com you surprised me a couple months ago i go to see aziz at the fox theater and then who's the opener? It's you. Was it me and Mateo Lane? Who else was it? Was, it was just you, it I It was believe. just me? Yeah. 
Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Fox Theater is beautiful, man. It was Atlanta, awesome. Atlanta is a great, it is really is a great city. That was city. such a huge shock and surprise. That was awesome. How did, how did that happen? Uh, I had, I've known Aziz from the Comedy Cellar for a while, and uh, he's a fun guy to tour with because he eats. So it's like Master <laughs> of None is like how we live. Yeah. So, uh, and then you rewatch season two of Master of None, and you're like, I'm pretty sure he just wanted to eat Italian <laughs> he food. He wanted to go to Italy. <laughs> I think he just pitched season two. He's like, we'll go to Italy. And they're like, oh. if they come back, he's just like in Tokyo. And they're like, this is weird. <laughs> Uh, no, he, uh, he's a fun guy to tour with because it's funny. It's like, this is the, it was, it's like the most decadent tour ever because we're just eating the best meals. Yeah. And then we eat to the point that we became like ill <laughs> and then, and then he'd be like Underberg shots, which is like a digestive. So then oh he's like, so you're doing shots to like get room for more food. Yeah. Cause he just eats that That's much. That's hardcore. And he's a little guy. There's not much room to put that food. Yeah. He, I, well, he has got more, uh, he's got more grace than, than like Phil Hanley is another good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. We'd be on the road with him a lot. And, uh, Phil and I had no willpower. We just like stuff everything. But as you take like one bite, he'd be like, "Oh, we're good. I got the bite." And I'd be like, "That's not yeah, how I no. am. I'm an animal. I have no self control." So uh, yeah, just eating the best food. And uh, we were in West Palm that because we did Atlanta, then mm. we did West Palm, and we were there with the Rolling Stones. Oh my god! And it's a it's a tour that Mick Jagger canceled. We would have gotten oh. us, we would have gotten to see the Rolling Stones. That's crazy. We're, we couldn't stop talking about it the whole time. We're like, dude, we would have seen. The stone. I'm with his brother Aziz, who's a really cool guy. Would have been like the perfect night. I was uh, so I, I've seen Aziz a couple of times throughout the years, but post whatever went on, I was very curious to see what his performance would be like, and I was impressed. It was sharp. It was tight. It was smart. Um, he, yeah. he put on a really good performance at the Fox. Yeah, man. Uh, I thought. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely doing a different thing now. So that's pretty yeah. cool. He definitely. Uh, he addressed whatever issues were going on. He addressed them and yeah. handled it. And I was like, "Wow, that's that that was pretty impressive." Yeah, he wanted to address it up top. I did he do it up top when you saw him. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty ballsy to but do. But he that handled it. Theater. He wasn't out there like reading a manifesto. He worked totally. it into his act. It was it totally. Was, it was pretty impressive. But but doing that is also you know. He, people don't understand that that's hard to work out because yeah. he he works it out at the comedy cellar. That's going to be on page six. So yeah, if he messes it up, point. right? I mean, so that's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. What What's funny is so that show. So again, I, I've I've seen Aziz a number of times over the years, and he used to open a show. I thought it was hilarious. He'd be like, "All right, take your picture now of me, so you don't take it during the show." And he would do these these like poses, and and everyone would take the pictures. But I, at the Fox. We had to lock up our phones, right. so I couldn't even like snag a picture of you on stage because they had those security bags that that, that took our phones before the show. So, I guess I guess that's 2019 in comedy. You, you know, you don't want any stuff getting out there. I guess I feel like I'm never going to be that way. But, you know, I, <laughs> but then I'm on stage sometimes with those shows. I'm like, well, the crowds are better because they're not on their phone. Like yeah. there, there is nothing more discouraging than looking out into a sea of people and just seeing them texting. And you're like, I'm, I'm I'm trying up here. Come on. You think that's bad? So. Um, to my right there is my phone screener, Low T Chuck, and he's like uh, a quarter of the show. There's four people on the show, me, Deb Green, Longoria, and Low T. And during a commercial break, I'll cut in through the screener's booth, and he's watching Netflix. And I'm like... <sighs> is he at least watching something good? <laughs> no, it's like, I don't even know what shows. But I've been like, watching Mindhunter, so I'm like, I am thinking of the Atlanta dude, airport. I just finished that. It's real. I'm not done yet, but I'm, I'm pretty into it. What's pretty cool is Sam Morell in studio, we're talking about Mindhunter now on Netflix. So um, it was the Atlanta missing and murder story, which was huge back here. I wasn't here at the time, but like late 70s, early 80s, where all these Atlanta kids just went missing. And we just had the anniversary of it. And so it was like a big news story here. And then I watched Mindhunter and season two set in Atlanta blew my mind just because of the local connection. Yeah. And I- I'll wait till you're done. Yeah, I'm not done two. yet, but it's a great show. I love that show. It's very yeah. cool. Speaking True of, crime, man. Speaking That's of Netflix, it's, it's kind of like uh, second home for comedians now. What, what's the deal with you? Not and for Netflix? me. No, yeah, they won't even. They on? won't even watch me. <laughs> you get. You got something in the works. You put in. A I'm, show put, I'm, I'm putting out my own show. I'm going to release my next hour on YouTube. Okay, for real, because I just, you know, I think unless you're on HBO or Netflix, then there's no point because i you look at the other ones like i love comedy central they've been so good to me but you look at this and it's like people go to watch my special there's a commercial every three minutes yeah. that's if you have cable that should be like the penalty for not having cable <laughs> you you have cable you pay for cable and you have and to sit through a commercial so uh 
yeah, it's like who is gonna? I would never do that. I would yeah. never. When the alternative is just watching um, someone on Netflix or HBO with no commercials, so I'm. I decided to just I'm gonna. I hired a crew already. I'm shooting at the Village Underground at the Comedy Cellar. Uh, I'm 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 charging the door. Yeah, and it's sold out the day of. So now I'm furious. I didn't charge more. more. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Both shows sold out immediately, and I was like, "Oh come on!" Uh, so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay out of pocket. I got a crew. I got an editor. I got a set designer. Excellent. I'm doing it all myself. It's a little stressful. I'm not an organized person. <laughs> I'm setting up conference calls. I'm getting dial in lines. This is not me at all. But uh, I, I think. World. But I think if I have a, a YouTube page, people will click on it and they'll go to it and they'll share it, and that's the only way to compete. I think. I, I think the YouTube route is a great route. And I'll tell you in just a second. Can you hang out again? Yeah. For another segment. Yeah. All right. Hang tight. Sam Morrell's in studio. The funniest man on the planet, Mark Aram says. <laughs> it's a horrible, I, it's a horrible billing because they're listening. They're like, this guy's not funny. He's just talking about the business. Well, we'll get to the funny stuff. All right. I, the, the, how funny is Sam? I bought my tickets for tomorrow night's show. At well, the you shouldn't have done that. You I, know I, me. I, I was not going to miss this. Um, Sam will be right back. I'm going to tell him why YouTube's a good route for his career. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Friday edition of the Mark Aram Show. Mark Aram on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Welcome back. Friday edition of the Mark Aram Show. Comedian Sam Morrill in studio. Before the break, we were talking about you doing your own YouTube uh, special and foregoing Netflix. And I think that's good for a couple of reasons, Sam. One, uh, you- YouTube is where the eyeballs are. As, as big as Netflix is, like we just started putting my podcast up on YouTube because so many people are there. And and as much as I love stand up comedy, I I'm like saturated on Netflix. Like there's so much going on. Like I haven't seen like the last. A six- lot of the stuff is bad on Netflix. So have you ever like we're talking Mindhunter, but most original shows kind of suck on Netflix. They're like over. I feel like there's no subtlety. Like that was the first show that I was like, oh, this is like a Mad Men type vibe. Yes. No, it's the, usually I've got not probably good. a dozen shows I've started and never got through yeah. two episodes. I'm like, I give up. But with the, there's just so much. And, and a couple of the stand-up specials aren't that great. Like I saw a couple. Some, <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm being kind. Yeah. Like, there were some comedian, comedians yeah. that I really liked, and I watched their stand-up special, and I was like, meh. Like, it wasn't. Well, you know, I, they're also just. They just bought up so much stuff that yeah. now it's like if if you want to sell a special, you either got to be plugged in or you got to be super famous. Yeah, I think that's kind of what it is. But I like the YouTube because I think honestly, um, you can monetize it yourself. I might not even. I might just take the hits just, I, and just get because the, I just want to get the. I, for me, you're going to get. You got to play to the competition, and I'll make the money back on the road. I think, yeah. but I, I I don't want to even do ads because I'm scared you no. lose. When you, like even when you're on Hulu and you get an ad, you're kind of like, why am I here? You know, that's well. I think with YouTube again, I don't. This is way you know. You talk about doing conference. I mean, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't know how any of that stuff works, but I think once you get enough views. Like, you'll get that 15-second ad at the beginning and then skip it in five seconds. But I think you can make money off of that. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, don't quote me, but I don't think you have to have ads in the middle of it. I think yeah, just I would that, not do that. All right, maybe up top. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Um, I do want to talk to you about something that bubbled up in the news last night, and it has to do with stand-up comedy. Can you hang out one sure, more second? Sure, yeah. All right, Sam Morrill in studio, funniest man on the planet. I have <laughs> never said that about anyone that's been on the show um, and he is. It's the truth. He's killing it right now. You Thank need to you go do. see him uh, on the punchline stage. Last chance you're going to see him in, a, in an intimate venue. And I, it's at a diner. When you pull up, don't be surprised. <laughs> be like, yeah, no, this is it. It's a diner. This is it. You can, you'll never see Sam in a diner again. Get some cottage cheese <laughs> and enjoy online, the show. Half a grapefruit, cottage cheese, and Sam Morrill. Uh, we'll be right back. This is the Mark Aram Show. Hi, this is Lewis Gossett Jr. This is the Mark Aram Show. And if you have any common sense, you should listen to the Mark Aram Show. He packed in the animals two by two. Ox, a camel, and a kangaroo. Packed him in that ox so tight. I couldn't get no sleep that night. From the sun, Jeff and him. Tell me about the master plan. Oh, my love. 
Welcome back. Friday edition of the Mark Aram Show. Uh, coming up on the program in just a couple of minutes, our buddy Brittany Tannenbaum from Access Atlanta will tell us about all the fun, exciting stuff going on in the ATL this weekend. Nothing more fun or exciting than uh, comedian Sam Oral. He is on the Punchline stage tonight and tomorrow, uh, punchline.com for tickets. Uh, so I saw this this morning on Twitter. Nikki Glazer tweeted it out. Apparently there's a stand-up comedian named Kelly Bachman. Um, who took the stage, excuse me, I just burp in the middle of the uh, <laughs> uh, update. She took the stage uh, in a, a small club-like venue, and Harvey Weinstein was in. I think it was called the Actor Studio. Was it the Actor? Yeah. So she's there, and it's a small uh, little space, and the 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 Harvey Weinstein, we all know who he is, he's in the audience, and she... Uh, addresses that, which I think as a comedian, you you probably do. I don't know. What would you do in that situation? Uh, yeah, I, would, I mean, I thought she handled it pretty well. She said she made a, it was weird. She made a couple of jokes and then they, she, they got, she got kind of booed. Maybe they were uncomfortable or something. Maybe. I think they're Har- they Harvey's boys that probably booed her is the way I yeah. interpreted that. Oh I yeah. Know. Well, I mean, yeah, I couldn't believe she got booed, but then she, I thought she had a really funny line where she. The other thing about the rape whistle and how uh, <laughs> these kill it, uh, group therapy for survivors. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I mean, it's a, off the cuff, it's a good line. And uh, I thought she stayed in the pocket and stayed pretty calm. Good yeah. for her. I mean, it, that's It's insane. That I mean, you, you can't go out if you're Harvey Weinstein. Right? you got to live... You gotta live like uh, a hermit, like, like what's her name in Sunset Boulevard. You gotta just stay in your in your mansion and yeah, just never go out. Exactly right. Or be in, he should be in prison. I mean, he, it's crazy that he's uh, anyway. He's trying to recapture his social scene. Can you imagine if you like you're like going into your Me Too chunk and you just see Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> That's like if I was doing jokes about my biological father and he actually showed he up. He shows up. Wow. That <laughs> he, would be, he so wouldn't. He would it, have you ever been rattled on stage by someone or something in the audience that sure. you, like, caught you off guard? You know, I saw, I saw Ron Jeremy in the crowd once, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, that's kind of weird. He's just sleeping during my set. He was just like, he looked very unhealthy and asleep. The fact that he's still alive is pretty remarkable. Oh, man. I guess on every level, right? He doesn't yeah. look... I don't think he looks like he... Eat. He's like an L.A. porn star who, like, does not... Like, like, shout out to him for being a porn star in an era now where, like, that... It's like seeing Babe Ruth. You're like, oh, you couldn't have started <laughs> yeah. today. You know, you couldn't catch up to Scherzer's <laughs> fastball. No thing. way. No, yeah, they're like, no, he was great in his day. Like, was he? Let's, <laughs> let's, is he Nelson Cruz? Is, yeah. it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I've been rattled a couple of, usually it's like something crazy happens. Like yeah. some guy says he's going to kick your ass. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, you will. This sucks. I don't want to have to defend myself. Yeah, so. that's not the, in the, in the tool belt of stand up. But that's, I mean, if you're, that's, it, it's a, anno- if you're a woman who's a survivor and you, <laughs> And you see this guy, you're like, I, I'm angry he's free, yeah. let alone in the crowd at my show. So, I mean, you, I've read a lot of the the allegations against Harvey Weinstein. He's a, he's a terrible disgusting. person. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. That's not, a, that's not a controversial statement. I acted like I was saying something <laughs> bold. He's not up. a good man. <laughs> but I, I would imagine, like, if I was on stage and I look out and, and it's like, oh, David Duke and the Klan have, uh, right. th- that, w- that would throw me off. Like, but you have to address that, I think, like... If there's something that, how does David Duke go out and not expect? Like, does he not know that like kitchens are made up of diverse staffs? Like, yeah. does he not think people are just <laughs> spitting in his food? Every but is he recognizable? I mean, everyone knows the name. I but... think people know what he looks yeah. like. I think I know what he looks like. He's actually better looking than Ron Jeremy, but he's not better looking than Topher Grace, who played him in <laughs> uh, Black Klansman. Good call. He's yeah. He's like we'll see. You know, he's. But how do you? If you're him, do you really? Not think people are just taking huge loogies on your burger That's every time. That's a great you... point. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm I'm very, super cautious about my food consumption anyway. So if I was, uh, you know, not the beloved figure that I am in Atlanta that dines Dude. out all the time, if I were a notorious, do you uh, get recognized at restaurants? I do, and it it's cool. I love it. It's awesome, but it's never better than when my parents are in town and I'm out and I get recognized. Like that makes. Everything worth it. I had so I'm, um, you know, I said earlier I'm seeing a, a girl and and we had an argument on the street. Oh, Not wow. an, it wasn't bad, but like she was mad at me and she had reason to be mad at me for something I did. And I was like pleading with her on the street in the West Village, and I'm like holding her hand, just pleading with her. And this guy walks by and he goes, Sam Morell, <laughs> and he go, and then as he walks by, he sees he takes a look at her and he goes, Atta boy, <laughs> and she's like, Ugh, like your fans stink. Yeah, they're just such. That's you know. the only time I don't. 
that I I have not had a good time being recognized because I mean I, I'm nowhere the level of you know someone super famous where I can't I can go out and do whatever. But once in a while I got recognized at the UPS store the other day. She goes like, "Are you Mark Aram?" I'm like, "Yeah, it was great." Um, the only time I I did not want to get recognized and I did. I was at the Shell station on my corner scratching off lottery tickets. Yeah. And I'm like, Shh, like, like, a, like an addict, like, Shh, all right, what? A, and I'm, hey, Mark Aram. And I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing the $5 scratchers. Things yeah. are a little tough back at home. I didn't think, you, I didn't think you'd be a lottery guy either. Well, yeah. you know, I got a system with the guy. Really? Yeah. And it's, I'm actually profitable. So the, the, the guy that works there, I've known him for years, and most people like me will buy the tickets and scratch them off in the, in the station, and if they win, they'll hand them, you know. So the guy will keep track because he's there at 4 in the morning, and I'll come in at 11 a.m. I'll be like, all right, what, which one hasn't hit yet? So he'll oh, tell wow. me, like, number 11 This is, like, hit. the lowest level insider trading. Yes. So then when I hit, and I, if, if I get, I'll, I'll tip him, like, 10% of my winnings. So it's a little Damn, yeah. Dude. So it's a little thing going it's on. It's like low stakes Ocean's Eleven, man. <laughs> it is totally inside. You're, Dan, you're Danny Ocean of Atlanta. <laughs> exactly. That Ocean's Fourteen, the scratch off uh, scam. Uh, <laughs> Sam, you got to run. I got to run. I'm so excited to see you tomorrow. Uh, literally, folks. Definitely don't buy tickets next time. I I, I Just freaked out because I didn't yeah. want to miss you, and I went on. I'm like. You know, let me see what's available. And Saturday 8 p.m. show was, like, almost done. I was, like, freaked out. That's great. So I jumped out. I'm very excited. Uh, tell the folks where you can find you on social media. Instagram's a must for you. You're so oh, funny. Thanks. Uh, it's just Sam Morell, M-O-R-R-I-L. And, uh, yeah, I, I try to post a lot of uh, clips from my stand-up. You know, I, if, I, if I'm ever pl- – I feel guilty plugging dates and not – Posting a joke to go along a little with something. it, you know, a little so. meat on the bone. I love when you post the old stuff, like stuff that I hadn't seen before necessarily, like from like ten years ago. You post something it's like, weird, still good stuff. Thanks, man. It's been it's it's funny. I, I'll be in like on the road sometimes, and there's just little things like you know you get kind of disrespected for like as we, we're talking about like the free booze days where you're like, oh come on, <laughs> you're paying me so little, I'll take the free booze. But like. uh yeah, you look back, you're like, damn, it's been a long time. It's been, it's, because, you know. It's a career. I started, I started pretty young, so it, it's, I haven't really known that many other things. Yeah. I started like 18, 19, so. That's amazing. So it kind of. the Juan Soto of stand-up comedy back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> I just, uh, I haven't really done anything else. So. Now you're the Edwin Encarnacion. Did he start super young? No, but he's super old now. That's, that's true. <laughs> Is he true? He's, like, he's like 36, isn't he? In, in baseball, that's super old. Uh, Sam, good stuff. I'll see you tomorrow night, brother. All right. Thank you, Mark. Joining us as she does every Friday from our partners at Access Atlanta and WSB-TV, Brittany Tenenbaum. Tenenbaum. Not Tenenbaum. Tenenbaum. I'm sorry. I was sleepy last Friday, and I slurred my words a little bit, Brittany, and I upset your family. You really did. I mean, La my, familia. My, flo- my phone was blowing up being... <laughs> Please tell Mark it's ten, not ten. Ten and bomb. Ten and bomb, yes. but it's okay. You know, I didn't. I didn't get mad. Like, do you have you ever seen the movie The Royal Tenenbaum? Yes, love that movie. Usually, when I run into someone or I'm paying for something, they're like Tenenbaum, like the Royal yeah. Tenenbaums. And then, of course, Tannenbaum, I think it's in German means Christmas tree. Yeah. And then I always have to have the conversation. I'm actually not. You know, I'm yeah. Jewish. I'm not Tenenbaum. So right. I apologize to the whole. Tenenbaum clan <laughs> in uh, North Georgia for uh, I was forgiven. Just, I was just sleepy. I'm always I sleeping know. on Friday. So. I know. You're um, the hard, hardest working man in the biz. So. I try, but I, I better save up my energy because there's a lot of fun Halloween stuff cooking this weekend. Yes. So we've got the Saints and Sinners Ball over at Park Tavern. This is an annual Halloween uh, party, which is pretty fun. I've heard it's uh, I've heard it's a blast. And general admission for that is going to be twenty bucks. Um, so a lot of, you know, hot girls and guys going out. It's apparently an epic bash every it is. year. Saints it definitely and is. And um, if you don't want to go to Park Tavern but still want to stay in the Highlands, there's Halloween in the Highlands, which involves neighbor, neighbors, Mo's and Joe's, um, and a few other bars over there. Tickets for that are 30 bucks. They're all going to be having, you know, specials, drinks, theme drinks, and food, and all of that. So basically just a big mingle, Halloween mingle. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of Halloween, it's timely that Wicked is at the Fox Theater now, yes. which is, uh, Fox Theater is just awesome anyway, but Wicked is apparently a really good show. It is. I think I think I told you this, but I peaked in second grade when I was in the Nutcracker at the <laughs> you Fox. You did not tell me that, no. Yeah. Um, basically, I was sleeping in uh, in rollers. My mom, I just have visions of 
being in the high chair because my brother and I are 10 years apart. So we yeah. still had a high chair when I was younger. She would roll my hair and then I'd go to Aww. school with rollers in my in hair, hair. Um, for the Nutcracker. And, you know, everyone would be like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just I I'm go in to the Nutcracker every year. At the it's Fox. so good, right? Yeah. It's like a year, tradition. I don't think it's going to be at the Fox. Oh, really? I think they're, the Cobb Energy Center, maybe. Oh, that. I'll have to yes. fact check myself on okay. that. I don't right. know. But the Fox is awesome. Yes, it is. It was a it was a dream come true. And um, have you so seen Wicked before? I have. I actually saw it a long time ago when it came to the Fox, maybe about six or seven years ago. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite uh, Broadway shows. I'm not a huge Broadway uh, show fanatic, but Wicked is is one of the best. Um, especially I loved Wizard of Oz. So, yeah. you know, good stuff. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to know what. What have you dressed up as in the past for Halloween? What are some of your epic co- Halloween costumes? As an adult, really, I, not much. Um, I had two go-tos as an adult. Ollie G, you okay. know, Sasha yep. Baron Cohen's, mm-hmm. uh, and Turtle from um, Entourage. So those are my two. Oh, that seems like an easy one. <laughs> it is pretty easy. That's just, like a cop out. I just wear my Knicks jersey and and uh, yeah, but uh, I don't. I can't honestly. It's been like five years since I actually dressed up for Halloween. I love Halloween. I loved Halloween back in college. I remember in fourth grade, a friend of mine dressed up as nuns, and my mom was terrified. It's like, <laughs> oh, you're going to a Jewish day school, and now you want to dress up as a nun? That's and we, okay. Oh, it was a pregnant nun because we put pillows. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's sacrilegious. You shouldn't <laughs> that's, do that. That's just too much. Do you have a costume for uh, for this year planned out yet? I don't. This is the first year. So we're t- we're, uh, Brody is going to be Luigi, okay. and his friend Max is going to be Mario. Beautiful. So they were FaceTiming the other day, showing each other their costumes had come in and so i was like maybe i'll be uh peaches isn't wasn't she from um no the mario game or whatever no i don't clue. know that's it's an eight-year-old's you know, world it just occurred to me looking at you right now um star wars the princess in england now the new princess uh, which one? Oh, megan markle you should be megan markle i you would kind of favor her a little I bit i would i love her yeah she is she seems so real yeah. and like down to earth get a little and, tiara Okay, all right. You could do that. Maybe a little baby. And... Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and then your boyfriend could put on Archie. a red wig and yes. be the, the prince. And be, and be Harry. There. Right, Megan and Harry. <laughs> and be Harry. There we go. Brittany Tannenbaum from Access Atlanta. Uh, all this stuff available, by the way, the events, et cetera, on WSBTV.com. And social media, where can we find you yes. and Access Atlanta? At Access ATL on Instagram. I'm at Britt Elise. And then you can watch the full Access Atlanta show on our WSB Now app on uh, Apple Roku. TV, Roku, I just like um, Roku. Amazon Prime, Fire. Something. <laughs> Amazon Prime Stick. Fire Stick. Yeah, um, yeah. check us out. All right, We're, have a great we got, weekend, buddy. You too. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Friday edition of The Mark Aram Show. Mark Aram on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Welcome back. Final segment of the Mark Aram Show on a Friday. Deb Green, again, welcome back. We we missed uh, the pants off you in your Italian vacation, European vacation. Mm-hmm. We were uh, we were hot messes. Yeah, he didn't know what was going on. I really did. Giving away tickets that we didn't have. Yeah, really? And, yeah, no. I didn't. Oh, <laughs> it was a mess. But uh, it's good to have you. And uh, you're here all next week, right? I'm back until probably another year. All right, excellent. <laughs> yes. Very good. Um Thanks to uh, I'm I'm gonna go see uh, Sam Morell tomorrow. Got a cool. lot going on tomorrow. I got oh, the listener what time lunch. Are you picking this up? Got the listener lunch. Mm-hmm. I got the Georgia Radio Hall of Fame dinner and uh, Maya's high school anniversary or reunion. Wow. That's a long day. Well, I've got a, a lot day. of stuff going on, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll squeeze it all in somehow. Uh, but listen, I'll see you folks tomorrow at the listener lunch. Hopefully, all you folks that donated will be there again. Noon kickoff. For the Mark Aram Show listener mm-hmm. lunch on the uh, Bulldogs bye week, Alex Williams is going to be there. Really? I just found it at free food. He's like, I'll oh, be there. Yeah, of, of course. I'll be there. Of course. I'll be there. He's not even working. He should uh, have to identify everything blindly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in together. order for him to get it. Yes. Like, if he can't identify it, he can't eat it. You think he would He would be able to identify rice pilaf? No. No. Just by taste? No. He just knows no. it's rice. He yeah. just knows it's rice? All right. Uh, let's do Star of the Show, Longoria. Longoria. <laughs> Uh, and now, are you guys ready for the Mark Aram Star of the Show? Uh, you know, I'm going to give it to Chuck. Chuck <laughs> actually had to screen call. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah. It did work today. After Very the bothersome. first three were off the, the grid, he was like, I got to ask them now what they want to yeah. talk about. Which I had to buckle down. To do. Yeah, so Chuck is star of the show for doing his job. Uh, <laughs> we'll continue the conversation on Twitter and Instagram, at Mark Aram, Facebook, Mark Aram, WSB. In the meantime, go to sleep, little baby. Sleepy little baby. Guests of the Mark Aram Show stay at the All Suite Omni Hotel, located in the heart of Chicago's Magnificent Mile.